5.3 logarithmic functions. And what we're going to start with doing is trying to graph x equals 2 to the power of y. So we're still just going to, basically what we're going to do is pick values of y in the xy table. Um, because our x values are going to be so weird that um, we don't want to actually have to pick our x values. So we're going to pick our y values, and we'll just start at 0, 1, 2, 3. And we're also going to do negatives of all those numbers as well, just so that we get a good range of numbers. And we're going to plug in 0 in for y. So x equals equals 2 to the 0, that will give us 1. Then I have x equals 2 to the 1st, that will give us 2. 2 squared will give us 4. 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the negative 1, we kind of did these ones yesterday, and so that we had negative, or not negative, I'm sorry, 1 over 2. And to the negative 2, I will have 1 over 4, 1 over 2 squared. And 2 cubed, I will, or 2 to the negative 3, I will have 1 over 2 cubed, which is 8. So I have 1 fourth and 1 eighth. So when I actually go to graph this, What I'm going to have is, if I go over 1, I don't go up any. If I go over 2, I go up 1. If I go over 4, I go up 2. But then if I go left 1, I am, oh, whoops, I'm looking at the wrong thing. If I go over 8, I go up 3, and if I go over 1 half, I have a negative 1. If I go over 1 fourth, I have a negative 2. And if I go over 1 eighth of a thing, I will have negative 3. So what really happens is this is also never going to hit the y-axis, so it's never going to hit the x equals 0 line. And I have almost like an exponential function, but it's not going to get very big very quickly. So if I were to give you this function and ask you to find the inverse, it would actually be a lot nicer to graph the inverse of this, because I would have y equals 2x, 2 to the x, I'm sorry. So it would be really easy to plot these points. So I would have 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And I would have 1, 2, 4, 8, 1 half, 1 fourth. I can't fit the other one on there, so I'll just erase it. And that would be a whole lot easier to graph. So if I go over 0, I'll go up 1. If I go over 1, I'll go up 2. If I go over 3, I'll go up 8. Whoops, where did I miss? If I go over 2, I go up 4. And then if I go over 3, I go up 8. And then I have 1 half, 1 fourth, and 1 eighth were the points that I plotted. And if I look closely at these, you can see that they would be reflected if I whoops, had done that, if I had drawn that line and tried to make them across that line, that they would just be little perfect inverses of each other. And each of the points would be the same distance away from that line, respectively, to each other. I kind of went too many points on that one. This one should have been over here. Basically, since this one was such a pain in the butt to graph, mostly because we would have got really odd numbers if we had picked our x's instead of our y's. Basically, you have to know which numbers you want, actually want to pick. So to avoid doing that, we've created what we call logarithms. 
can't spell logarithm. Actually, I can spell logarithm. That is how you spell it. Um, so what we're actually going to do, the way that we would actually represent this previous formula that we've already done, that we've already graphed, so this previous formula would be written like this. It would be the log of x with a base of 2. And what, how we say this um, is log of x base 2. Okay, so this is our base. And this is whatever our variable is. So think about this. This is the same. This is the base of our exponent. That's why it's called our base. So for the first few questions that you have, you will be given something like this and asked to graph it. And then they also have some questions um, that I'll have you graph. And it will probably be easier just for now to actually convert it back to an equation like this, but you'll be given something... Oops, where's my pen? My pen's not working. You'll be given something like y equals log of 4x. What you're going to do is graph the equation and basically pick these same y numbers to actually plug in. will be the easiest thing to do. And you will then graph x equals 4 to the power of y. So if you pick your y numbers and then you can plot those xy pairs by doing that and that will represent what these are. So I think you should probably try to write them both ways for your graphing on those first few. You will be asked to also evaluate problems that will look like this which is log of 8 base 2 your book reads them as log base 2 of 8. I don't like saying it that way, but it doesn't really matter. What we're going to do is we can actually convert these to back to an exponential equation so you can actually see how it's working. And then we'll just get used to not doing it back into the exponential form. We're wondering what this really means is 2 to what power equals 8. I can put an X up there instead of a question mark. Okay, so the easiest thing to actually do when we convert these is to rewrite it as log of 2. And I want to write it with a base of 2, so 2 cubed is actually 8. And my answer will then be whatever my exponent is, is 3. I can look at it here and just say X equals 3 because 2 cubed is 8. So this is really how we solve these types of equations. It's easiest if you actually rewrite it as an exponential form inside the logarithm. Okay, and then uh, kind of a hard one is log of base 9 of 3. So I have to rewrite 3 as a power of 9. Well, we can see that 3 is the square root of 9, so I'll just rewrite it. I have to keep my base. I can't change my base on anything. And I'm going to write the square root of 9. Um, I don't know if we've really covered this, but this really represents 1 half. So then I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it just for you guys to say log of 9 to the power of 1 half, base 9. So my answer will be 1 half. There's some nice ones that are log of 8, base 8. Log of 8, base 8. Um, this is really just something to the first power. So the log of anything with the same base is just always 1. Uh, and then we also have anything to the power of, or log of 1 to any base whatsoever. It does not matter if I rewrite this as an exponent and I have 6 to what power is equal to 1. Anything, and always, the only thing that works is 0. 
unless of course your base is 1, which we don't do because that would just be a flat line. x would equal 0. Even if I had log of base 500 and let's say 5005, which one is going to equal 1? It would still just be 0. Okay, so these are two like important like ideas about logs. And then we also get really lazy and the one that we the log base that we use the most is actually log base 10. And when we have a log base 10, we actually don't write it. So sometimes in your books it looks like they write it, sometimes they don't. Okay, anytime it's not written, it's understood that it's 10. So just make a little note, just understood as 10. So I need to rewrite 10,000 as a base of 10. Um, so we rewrite 10,000 with a base of 10. So I have log um, 10,000 is really 10 to the fourth. I really just have to count my zeros for 10,000. And so my answer would just be 4 when I go to find them. Okay, on the same way, if I have decimal, so the log of 0 0.01. Okay, so we have to rewrite this. This is really, it's easier if we re rewrite it as a fraction. So I have log of 1 over a hundred, because this is really what position this is. This is the tenths and this is the hundredths. And then I rewrite 100 as a power of 10. So I have log of 1 over 10 squared. And since it's in the bottom, it's really negative. So I'm going to rewrite it now as log of 10 to the negative 2. And then my answer is negative 2. You hopefully don't have to go through all of these steps usually to go through that. I just want to show you that. Um, and then we have, um, and then we also have ln of any number. So let's just say like e to the fourth. Um, ln represents the log with a base e. We don't write it, we just use natural log so often. So um, if it is already in the, with a base of e um, for your exponent piece, um, your answer here would just be 4 because these basically simplify out. Okay, and then we have, um, if you had to do it with a calculator, you would just find that button. So in the calculator, if I asked you to do the natural log of e, so e is actually on your division symbol. So if I said e to the fourth, and not 44th, it will just give me 4. Okay, some of your questions are going to ask you for something like the natural log of 58, which is not something that we can just go through and figure out. So it gives you 4.64. So actually e to the fourth is probably pretty close to 58 if we look at it. Not that that matters, but e to the fourth is 54. So um, you can also do your logs in the calculator. Right now all you can really do is log with a base of 10. So some of your questions might ask you for log of 5. And what you're going to do is just type it in the calculator. There's a section that says do not use the calculator, and what that means is write them out by hand. And there's a section that has a calculator, which means they're not going to be even. So 5 is not a power of 10. Okay, and then we're going to do some convert to logarithmic equations. Can't spell. So if I am given something which is going to be considered in exponential form, this is exponential, 
and I want to make it into a logarithmic form. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this. This is my base, and this is my exponent. So what I do to rewrite this is I have log base 2 of 16 is what power? This is my logarithmic form of this. These are basically the same equations, just in different form. Exponential and logarithmic. So then if I give you 10 to the negative 3 equals 0 .0001, all I'm asking you to do is rewrite it. I'm not asking you to find everything because I already know all of my stuff. So what that's going to tell me is log base 10, so I don't actually write it, of point zero 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 one equals negative 3. This would be the log form. This is the exponential form. Then if I ask you to convert e of t equals 70, my base is e, so instead of writing log, I write natural log. Base is e, obviously, and my number is 70, so I have natural log of 70 equals t. And then I'm also going to have to do the opposite way, which will be converting to exponential form. So you'll be given something in a logarithmic form. You might have something like log of 7 with a base of 7 equals 1. So just converting that to an exponential equation, I would write the base. My base is 7. Oh, my pen is spazzing. Okay, so I would rewrite log, or I write 7, my base, to the power of 1. My power is on the other side of the equal sign, equals 7. Okay, then maybe I might have log of 32 with a base of 2 equals 5. I'm rewriting this. My base is 2, my exponent is 5, and that is equal to 32. Okay, so that's just all you're asked to do when you rewrite an equation. Then they have the log of q base a equals 8. We're not asking you to solve anything, we're just asking you to rewrite it. My base is a, a to the eighth power is equal to q. Okay, and then one with lots of letters in it. I have x equals the log base t of m. So my base is t, t to what power equals m, t to the x power equals m. That's just how you rewrite it. Some questions ask you to find the log of a negative number. The log of anything negative is going to give you a non-real answer. Um, if it does not give you a non-real answer, you can change your mode to give you um, the a plus bi. So if you go down in your mode and I go down to the real and I can go over to a plus bi and I quit out of there. Now if I ask it to do the log of negative 2, it gives me an i in my answer. Okay, so it just depends on the mode. I'm just really looking for the non-real answer does not exist. The same things with natural logs will happen. So if I do the natural log of negative 5, okay, this one will give me something with an i. Most of the time what you actually want it to give you is something with just a non-real answer. Okay, and then we have what's called our change of base formula because we 
really we like most of the time to be able to actually type it in to the calculator. Um, it's pretty useless for us to see um, like in the real world equations, so we still need to do it out by hand. But most of the time when you'll actually have to do these things, um, we don't want to actually have perfect little numbers. We want the numbers that actually exist and make the thing work. In a general form, it's the log of m with a base of b. And we convert that. We can convert it to any base we want to. And we're going to take our top number. Basically, our big number will be on the top of our fraction. And we will divide by the log of our lower number. And we will usually use the base of 10 or natural log. We'll use just anything that we actually want to. So let's try this. We're going to do the log of 8 with a base of 5. I don't know how to actually evaluate this in the calculator because anytime I actually go to do things in the calculator, I can only push log. I cannot push log, base, whatever. So I actually have to be able to use the log stuff. Um, so I have to ha be able to use it with a log of base 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it as a log base 10. I'm going to go ahead and write it just so we know what we're doing. Of 8 divided by the log base 10 of 5. My pen is not very happy this morning. Okay, so this is an 8. Now I can go through and type it in my calculator. So now we're going to rewrite this. Um, log of 8, and we're going to divide that by the log of 5. And then we're going to push enter and see what it gives us. It gives us 1.292. 1.292. We can use any base we want to, so we can also use the natural log and use a base of e. So we can do the natural log of 8 and the natural log of, divided by the natural log of 5. Even if we type that in the calculator, it will give us the same answer. The natural log of 8 divided by the natural log of 5. Okay, 1.292. However, I just don't want you to think that you can interchange logs and natural logs because I cannot do the natural log of 8 divided by the just plain old log of 5. That does not work whatsoever. Okay, that does not give us an answer that works. You cannot have different bases when you actually go to type these in. They have to be the same thing. So you'll actually be asked to use these in a calculator. So you'll need a calcula calculator that does logs. You'll be asked to graph a lot of these. Um, and you'll most of the time have two graphs on each function. And a lot of them will look like our original graphs that we did. And we'll have two graphs on the same function or on the same axis, I'm sorry. Um, in order to graph, the one thing that it's going to ask you to do that you probably will not know how to do yet is actually decide what the vertical asymptote is. Asymptote. So um, if I just give you the log base 3, of x plus 5, what I'm going to go through and do is I'm just going to set what's ever inside here equal to 0. Same thing when I factor it, I would get x equals negative 5 is where my vertical asymptote will equal. Okay, if however I just had the log of 11 x plus 3, let's say something like this, we will have, there's nothing actually in parentheses, so I will just consider this basically my parentheses. So um, this will happen at x equals 0, and I will just say my vertical asymptote is at the y-axis, or x equals 0, same thing. This is plus 1, minus 3, anything out to the end is not going to affect my vertical asymptotes. So for homework, I want you to do stuff on page 428, 426. 
and I want you to do numbers 3 through 114 by 3s.